gated channels regulate certain ions or molecules, or I should suggest they influence the permeability of certain ions or molecules across the plasma membrane, whether that's into or out of a cell. Keep in mind things are still moving down their chemical gradients or concentration gradients. And there, there are times certainly where we where there are pumps pushing things against their gradients, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about channels that allow ions or molecules to move down their chemical gradients or concentration gradients. They diffuse into the cell, but those gates are not always accessible to them. I should say the channels are not always accessible to them because they are gated. Sometimes the gates are open, sometimes the gates are closed, and some sort of mechanism like a lock and key is required to open up those channels. We have a number of different types of channels, gated channels. We have ligand gated channels, which open up when a signaling molecule binds to them. We have voltage gated channels, which open up when there's a change in voltage in the cell. And we have mechanically gated channels that open up when there's some sort of physical change in the channel protein. It could be due to pressure, it could be stretch, some sort of push, physical deformation of that protein. So we're going to take a look at all of those. The first one we'll look at are ligand-gated channels. And once again, ligand-gated channels open up due to a signaling molecule binding to that channel. So a ligand is a signaling molecule. And in the body, we have a number of different types of signaling molecules. We have neurohormones, hormones, neurotransmitters, paracrines, autocrines. There's also molecules known as factors that could be functioning as ligands as well. So what we see here is we see a channel protein with a gate that is closed. So here's the gate right here. And right here is the binding site for the ligand. So if we have a specific ligand, let's say a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine, that would bind to this site to open up the channel. So once that signaling molecule or ligand binds to the channel, it opens up the channel. And then when that channel is open, things can move through the channel. One thing I want to be clear about, the ligand or signaling molecule is not what is moving down the channel. What moves through the channel is what is specific to the channel. So for example, this might be called a sodium ligand gated channel. So sodium would move into the cell only if the gate were open, but that gate only opens if the ligand binds to it. So for example, we have acetylcholine that opens up channels, specifically sodium gated channels. Acetylcholine would be the ligand and sodium is the ion that actually passes through the channel. So I, it's really important that the ligand doesn't pass through the channel. And just for clarity, there are signaling molecules or ligands that pass directly through the plasma membrane. Those are lipid-based signaling molecules or ligands. And the receptor for those signaling molecules are within the cell. They are intracellular receptors that activate proteins within the cell. But we're talking about signaling molecules that bind to this channel protein on the exterior aspect of the cell. We also have what are known as mechanically gated channels. And these mechanically gated channels could be opened up due to some sort of stretch, push, or pressure within the cell. For example, blood pressure will open up Elevated blood pressure will open up mechanically gated channels. And when these channels open, and this applies to ligand gated channels and to mechanically gated channels and certainly voltage gated channels, it causes something to happen to the cell. So in the previous example, 
and this example, if this gate were to open and sodium, for example, were to move in, that would cause a change in voltage in the cell. It would cause the cell to depolarize. It does not always call it, cause a depolarization event. It could cause the activation of a G protein within the cell. And we'll talk about details of all of that. But there is a purpose for letting, say, sodium into the cell or potassium out of the cell or glucose into the cell. Glucose doesn't really come into cells via gated channels. There's a different, different mechanism for opening up channels for glucose. And some of the glucose channels are just always open. They're not gated. So this is a mechanically gated channel. As we can see here, that just changed shape. Now, truth be known, I believe all of these channels are going to change shape to a certain degree. And that would be what's known as a conformational change due to whatever stimulus it is. If it's a ligand or signaling molecule, that causes a conformational change that opens the gate. Mechanically gated channels, whatever it is, the pressure, the stretch, causes a conformational change to open up the gate. But that's why I've shown this channel to be significantly different or let's say more cylindrical or slender than the previous mechanically gated channel that was closed. And then we have voltage gated channels. Voltage gated channels open up when there is a change in voltage of the cell. Once again, all these cells I've been drawing, I've been showing them at rest which would suggest we have roughly negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts within the interior of the cell, positive outside and negative inside. As we see, this gated channel is closed. This gated channel will only open, specifically a voltage gated channel only opens when there is a change in voltage. Don't worry now what causes the change in voltage, but it's probably something like sodium moving into the cell going into different channels, not these specific channels. So don't focus on how or why the cell changes voltage, but when it does, it will activate these voltage-gated channels. That is to say, when it turns positive within the cell, that gate opens. Okay, so that is it for gated channels. We had ligand gated channels, mechanically gated channels, and voltage gated channels. There are other types of channels that couldn't get put in place via exocytosis, and we'll talk about that. That's significant with insulin and glucose. And that's it for today. Enjoy your summer. It's uh, June 10th, Corona summer, super sunny out. No longer the cloudy days of June gloom that used to be typical of Santa Cruz, but I believe global warming has changed all that. So we have much sunnier days and much warmer days. So go enjoy that. Get in the ocean, be with family and friends, and we'll talk again.